Hey folks, Joseph Sabora here, doing a movie review this week. It's a high school teenage comedy, very popular one, that came out on April 30th, 2004, celebrating its 15th anniversary this year. You wouldn't believe it. It's the movie Mean Girls. Yep, this is the Special Collector's Edition DVD that I picked up recently at Goodwill for only a buck ninety nine as you can see the tag right here um, there's also a widescreen edition available yeah because I have the full frame edition go figure but it does have all the features included so it's worth it and the transfer isn't that bad you know, despite being stretched out but it's closer to look exactly as possible does have details on the top and bottom. Um, there was a Blu-ray that came out a long time ago, but sadly went out of print. I'm hoping maybe Paramount will reissue it again for a cheaper price. I don't know why they haven't done that yet. I'm hoping maybe they will have an Ultra HD 4K release uh, with the Blu-ray included. Maybe add some new features. I mean, they might probably work on a 15th anniversary edition, but I'm not so sure if Paramount's going to do that, because as the years follow, you know, I don't think Paramount's doing a good job. But who knows, you know. But this movie was a huge hit. Out of its $17 million budget, it only made $129 million worldwide, so... This was something that we didn't expect from all these teen comedies that we had during 2004 yeah like for example we had Napoleon Dynamite because that was another hit um, that's an independent movie considering the fact that it was produced by MTV and and Fox as well as Paramount same studio that released this film I mean that film did earn its success but this one was another shot of, of the film because it's based on a 2002 help guide for teenage daughters called Queen Bees and Wannabes, you know, how to survive high school by gossip and social cliques around that might have a damaging effect on them. So that was the whole point. Yeah, okay. I'm just going to check to see what the DVD looks like. <laughs> <laughs> and of course uh, the features so it's a story about a girl who's actually homeschooled from her parents and wants up in Evanston, Illinois to actually discover a, a group called the Plastics, and this is the group right there that's led by you know, Rachel McAdams, along with uh, her sidekicks, uh, Lisa Chabur, and Amanda Seyfried, or Seyfried, whatever you, well, whatever it's pronounced. And, and of course, Lindsay Lohan plays the, the young girl. But it's sad to say, though, this was one of her last good films because afterwards, you know, she had a, a mediocre track record as it follows. And that's what led to her um, DUI and, and drug addiction. Yeah. That's sad. It's too bad, though, because she really was a talented actress. You know, she was in movies like The Parent Trap Remake with Dennis Quaid and Natasha Richardson, God rest her soul. And to me, that was actually one of the better remakes that we ever got um, over the years. Definitely better than It Takes Two with the Olsen twins. Yeah, that was their take on The Parent Trap, in my opinion. <laughs> but then she also went on to do the remake of Freaky Friday, which, interesting enough, it's from the same director who did this. Yeah, Mark S. Waters. With uh, Jamie Lee Curtis. 
And that turned out to be a success and actually turned out to be the best remake we ever got. Just like the parent trap. So this was going to be uh, her next big thing. Even though she just did a Disney movie um, before this called The Confessions of a Teenage Drama Queen. Yeah, pretty average. Um, but this was way better. <laughs> I saw this in theaters, of course. Uh, like, during my birthday, even though I went to see Kill Bill, Volume 2, um, not a good movie. But I love it. So, it, it was a big surprise. So, I, I was happy. Because, yes, even guys could watch this film, too. It's not just a girl film. A chick flick. But it can relate to people who were at high school. You know, I was in high school, and and there's several differences like that. But anyway, let's uh, get to the review. It stars Lindsay Lohan, uh, Rachel McAdams, and I know she went on to do other films, too, like The Notebook, same year, and even the comedy uh, Wedding Crashers, and even the film... Uh, as well as the movie Morning Glory you know, with Harrison Ford and and Diane Keaton good movie by the way Lacey Chabert you know has been known for doing the voice of um, of Eliza Formberry in the movie The Wild Formberries but I know she's been in the TV series uh, uh, Party of Five and she's been in a lot of stuff too Amanda Seyfried, this was actually her screen debut. This was before she went on to do other films. But she's a great actress, nevertheless. Uh, Lizzie Kaplan, yeah, before she went on to do um, Cloverfield, among others. Daniel uh, Franzensi. Uh, Jonathan Bennett. Tina Fey who's not only the, the writer of the film, but she's also the co-star. Yeah, from Saturday Night Live. Along with Tim Meadows, uh, Anna Gazier, and Amy Poehler. Neil Flynn, who later went on to do the TV series The Middle, yeah, as the father. Uh, Daniel DeSanto, yes. Who's been known for doing uh, some voice acting from the TV show The Magic School Bus? I think he was the voice of Carlos. Yes. Carlos, the character. He was also um, in the TV show Are You Afraid of the Dark? Diego Kondoff and Alicia Mortison. Written once again by Tina Fey. That's based on the book. Queen's Bees and Wannabes by Rosaline Wiseman and it's directed by Mark S. Waters. The movie begins when we meet a 16 year old teenage girl named Caddy Heron who's played by Lindsay Lohan who's been living with her parents who are zoologists Betsy and Chip both played by Anna Gassier and Neil Flynn yeah, ever since um, she was a little girl, she was um, homeschooled after a 12-year research in Africa. So she gets to learn everything that's happening there. Yeah, having a good life over there. Until she winds up coming back to Evanston, Illinois on her first day attending high school, which is called North Shore High School. That's where Katie meets her new classmates, Janice Ann, who is a golf artist girl, uh, along with uh, Damien Lee, who's a boy who's gay. Uh, they're both played by Lizzie Kaplan and Daniel Fincesi. Yeah, Katie's first day in high school was a wreck. Yeah, everyone was mean to her. Uh, she became a klutz when she accidentally uh, knocked over her math teacher, when she actually had bought some coffee and and her name of course is Miss Sheridan Norbury played by Tina Fey so 
So she had to change her shirt by lifting it up, you know, reviewing her bra. Because, you know, she was filled with all these coffee stains right in front of her students. And and the principal, you know, Ron Duvall, played by Tim Meadows. That's when the next day, you know, she, both Janice and Damien decided to educate her on the school's uh, various uh, cliques just to avoid um, the most popular group of the entire high school called the Plastics. Yes, the Plastics. You know, they're basically free girls who love to wear all these dresses that kind of resemble a Barbie doll. And they, they actually learn all their secrets behind them and have their own rules too. But they're led by a queen bee who's a manipulator named Regina George, played by Rachel McAdams, along with her sidekicks, um, Gretchen Wieners, who's a witch but insecure, that's played by Lacey Chabur, and a dim witted but very sweet named Karen Smith, that's played by Amanda Seyfried. The Patsicks suddenly took an interest in Caddy and um, invites her to sit with at lunch, you know, trying to see that Caddy is trying to get along with them. But Janice devised a plan to actually have a revenge against Regina because she was once friends with her, and we all know how that turned out. And actually using Caddy as an infrarator. But that so during that time, you know, Caddy was with the plastics, you know, just trying to discover what they do. You know, they go around shopping and you know, buying some new sets of clothes. Uh, they even invited her inside her house. That's a mansion. You know, she's very rich, which she lives by her rich mother. That's plastic surgery. <laughs> yeah, which, which is June George. That's played by Amy Poehler. Yeah, of course the the producers behind the film thought that she was too young to play the role, but but then, you know, seeing that Tina's friends with uh, Amy, he thought, what the hell, let's just keep her in, try to make her as older as possible. Yeah, she even has uh, a chihuahua, so I guess you could say she sort of like, sort of resembles to a legally blonde character yeah, that Reese Witherspoon would play <laughs> in that movie. Also has a little girl too that's that's just going around, you know, doing all these dance moves while the song the milkshake is being played, yeah, by Killis. Uh yes, they even show uh, that one scene where she was actually watching a one of those uh, girls gone wild videos and it's all censored. Yeah, I can't believe you actually let a young girl watch that. It's just it's just strange. Um so that's when Caddy learns about a uh, an old journal that Regina has called the Burn Book, which is filled with all these uh, secrets, rumors, and all these insults towards other students around you know, the ones that she meets. And yes, she even found out about Janice, but decided to uh, to lie just for that. But after finding that out, uh, Janice decided to use the plan to get back at Regina. So Caddy decided to to actually use uh, some of the schemes that she had to use, but doesn't carry out much of her schemes for other reasons. Like for example, um, she actually takes a, a yeah, which is a Swedish um, energy bar that which at which actually can make you gain weight, even though she actually lied to her thinking that this will make her lose weight. And we all know how that turned out at the end when <laughs> you know, she started gaining this much weight. Um, and her dress size doesn't fit perfectly anymore and, and she's already growing a huge butt. But meanwhile, Caddy decided to become attractive to Regina's ex-boyfriend named Aaron Samuels, who's played by Jonathan Bennett, uh, but purposely fails uh, the math test. You know, she's usually good at math, 
But she did that mostly so she would be able to contact with Aaron. But Regina jealously steals Aaron back at a Halloween party. Yeah, because she was dressed up as uh, like a corpse bride. Yeah, everyone else was like dressing all these other costumes. I mean, yes, uh, <laughs> Regina was dressed up as a, as a cat and everyone else was just dressed up exactly for Halloween. Um, so this this alone was what caused her to to actually uh, cut off Regina's resources and was at least all that revenge that she had to come up with and then this is where after all of that Caddy suddenly becomes the new mean girl you know taking over her image and eventually abandons uh, Janice and Damien, which is a shame. But also Janice and Damien did come up with their own plans too. Like for example, uh, Damien dresses up as Santa, trying to give every student out there some candy canes, like like two of them a piece, and none of them for Gretchen Wieners. <laughs> Or they even tried to actually set up a uh, a prank on on the table, so hoping that like Regina might be able to fly off of it. But uh, yeah, but then one of them actually knocked over. Or at this rate, uh, Janice actually decided to cut uh, Regina's blouse, but, you know, just cutting all the holes uh, on her boobs area right there. And she's like, well, she accepted it, and everyone else was doing it too. <laughs> that was crazy. But anyway, as Caddy suddenly takes over to become the lead here, Regina decided to come up with her own revenge by actually, get this, um, actually retaliates uh, herself by actually putting her own picture and write down all these uh, mean comments on the book and be able to you know copy all these um, all these pictures and comments towards everyone around even started to uh, tell this to the principal about who did this who created the burned book which led to a huge fight throughout the entire students in the hallways and both principal Ron Duvall along with the math teacher, Miss Norberry, decided to send all the students inside the gymnasium to solve the problem here. Uh, even the principal was planning to cancel the prom night, but since they already hired a DJ to do so, yeah, he had to pay full money for it that they couldn't. So, Miss Norberry had to explain to them who wrote it. And someone needs to um, be able to um, speak up, thinking maybe someone around here might have done this. Yeah, Caddy was actually trying to uh, keep herself silent here, yeah, so she wouldn't want to take the blame, trying to protect uh, Regina. Yeah, there's even quotes like, you know, sluts and whores and all that in the mix, you know all this mature bullying. But of course uh, they actually came up with their own set of rules you know, with, by actually uh, having all the students go up to them in a crowd and just actually have them grab them kinda like a concert you know where all the crowds always grab everyone and you know, they jump up to the crowd and they everyone's like held on to it. Well they were doing that too in, in this which is pretty impressive that he did it <laughs> but it was pretty funny because at the end <laughs> uh, Gretchen was about to uh, <laughs> was about to do the same thing with with, her, with everyone trying to grab her but then it was it was Karen that that grabbed her and and they both fell down uh, but after all of this uh, Regina suddenly storms out of school uh, Caddy was ready to apologize for all of this that happened 
And then this is where we get uh, this particular gag that, that just came out of nowhere. Regina got run over by a school bus and actually uh, broke her spine. So she wants to wear a that halo that, that will help her. So Katie got grounded after she just revealed um, about the burnt book towards everyone. So she figured she had to take the blame. Already being shunned by Aaron, especially after spread the rumor, which is you know word bomb it. But yeah, she did bomb it later. Um. So now she becomes an outcast from everyone. But then we learn that she does become back to her original personality, as usual, being the smart girl. She's also entering a, a math contest because she actually joins um, with uh, a math tutor in, in a uh, state championship finals. So that way she'll be able to win. I mean, just to make up all the math tests that she had to take. Um, and then later she went to the prom. You know, hoping things will turn out for the best for her. Because everyone was already having the best time of their lives. And what do you know it? She actually won as a prom queen. But she just breaks the, the tiara in half. You know, just explained... Uh, her speech just to uh, throw throw them to all the other girls around to to reconcile with all the classmates and everyone so she learned her lesson so afterwards um, well things have changed for the better for everyone so Katie now has her um, her wonderful high school days and yeah, well Karen is a school read a reporter, you know, Gretchen joins the the cool Asians uh, clique uh, and Regina joins the La Croce's team to deal with her anger yeah she's just playing all these games but then she begins to spot uh, the junior plastics to join in so now there's going to be another follow-up <laughs> Um, but I gotta say, this was, um, well done, uh, had witty dialogue, it was very intelligent, coming from Tina Fey, because she definitely knows how to write a script that's not going for all these cliches that we often see in the teenage comedies, uh, but this was definitely original, and, and it really shows, I don't think we ever see a film that focused towards the actual group, so this was very new to them. And I think they really led to what was going on with, with bullying too, yes, because you know people do um, you know people actually have been bullied a lot in high school. So everybody has to be mean. So now we know why high school could be you know, very dangerous at times. I mean with all the situations going around and everything. Uh, has a great cast, uh, besides Lindsay Lohan joining in. I mean, Rachel McAdams was very good playing the role as Regina. Even for a rich, popular teenager, I mean, she is indeed the meanest girl of them all. You know, being a manipulator and, and she wants to um, hanging out with the boys and stuff, doing whatever she can. And the fact that you get the other two girls, uh, Lacey Chabert and Amanda Seyfried, you know, just playing, you know, the direct opposite of her. Yeah, one's insecure and the other one is a dim-witted one. So they were very good too. You know, it was also great that uh, even Lizzie Kaplan was very good as the as the autistic girl who loves to do a lot of art, but she's also golf. She but tries to hatch a plan to to get in her uh, in Regina's game here and Daniel Francesi you know very funny as Janice's best friend and, and the fact that he loves to listen to um, 
all these pop stars, yeah, including Mariah Carey and Christina Aguilera, and all this other stuff here. <laughs> but he's a cool guy, um, as well as the rest, as well as Tina Fey as as the math teacher, uh, Tim Meadows as the principal, Amy Poehler as uh, as Regina's mother. Anna Gassier as uh, Caddy's mom. Even Neil Flynn as, as Caddy's dad. So they're all good. Um, I love the moments where uh, they were actually having the the uh, the school play. Where yes, they were doing the yeah yeah they were doing the the Jingle Bell Rock. Where yeah originally it was just the the Plastics only doing. Only three of them in the group originally, but now they have four of them joining in. So they actually did that memorable uh, <laughs> you know, dance number for the song before the yeah you know, before they accidentally kicked uh, <laughs> the boombox and hits the 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 boy in the audience. <laughs> yeah, since it didn't work. Uh, they decided to do this, the tune themselves with the help of Caddy. Yeah, very memorable scene. Um, there's other memorable scenes in the film too um, that really follows. And also, you know, some memorable quotes like So Fetch and Work Bomb It, all of that. Yeah. I mean, it's just like all the other uh, teenage comedy films from the 80s and 90s. You know, kind of like a John Hughes uh, aesthetic type of comedy. But it's done with um, SNL veterans joining in. So they really know what they were doing. And Mark S. Waters did a fine job directing this movie. I mean, you know, with the help of Tina Fey since she wrote the screenplay. Um, very smart screenplay, intelligent. She definitely knows what she's doing. Um, it's just great that you know they were working together, you know, without any any uh, bad scenes here and there. Uh, and the soundtrack wasn't too bad. I mean, just a mix of pop songs that you're familiar with, but it's not, but not any of those those typical ones that we get in the early 2000s or so. Like I'm, and I'm just glad we didn't get to hear any songs by, by Britney Spears and, and Stink and all those other ones. So thank God for that. <laughs> so they're just something different. But back to Lohan though, um, she also narrated the story too, which, which is really cool to actually see her point of view. And I, I love the fact that we begin to find out that yes, uh, her parents are zoologists and, and the fact that she had to stay in Africa for 12 years ever since she was a little girl and I kinda like the fact that it sets up for the story because it's almost like a fish out of water story in a way so we never see that in, in teen comedies so I love that idea yeah there is a sequel to the movie that aired on ABC Family um, and went direct to video from Paramount, um, which is just basically, might as well just be a carbon copy of the original film. Nothing special, nothing memorable, it's just forgettable. I know they were going to plan on doing an actual sequel to this film, probably when they grew up, but that never happened. And they were actually going to get another one so it sort of sets up the story. It was going to be a spin-off where it's still going to have Jennifer Aniston to be in the film too. Yeah, it was going to be called Mean Moms. Yes, this is going to be an adult version of Mean Girls. Uh, that still hasn't come to play yet. <laughs> or I think they just canceled it. I don't know. But if you ask me, the original film should stay the way it should be. It should never have a sequel. It's just one. It should have been just a standalone film as it is. It's better that way. So anyway, that's Mean Girls, and I give the film five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.